Hello, putting this clip on tumble dryers. Why we're talking about tumble dryers, what's that got to do with solar PV and battery? Um, so what I found that the tumble dryer is absolutely destroying the battery capacity. So if you can think about it, the, typically when you're going to use your tumble dryer, you're not going to use it in the summer when it's nice and bright and sunny and loads of sunshine hours. So it gets used in the winter and it doesn't usually get used when the weather's too hot either. So it's got a bit of a double whammy effect where it just destroys your battery. So I felt the need for dealing with that problem. The best way to deal with that problem is get rid of the tumble dryer and get a new one. So the new one is a heat pump tumble dryer. So the heat pump works differently. It generally lasts a little bit longer, but it runs at a much lower current. Therefore, it's far more efficient, but also it helps when you're using a battery storage system because it runs at 650 watts as opposed to 2,500 watts, so 2.5 kilowatts. So uh, that also helps if you're using solar and battery, because remember, our battery has a maximum discharge of 2.2 kilowatts. So if there was no solar, so it was at night time, our, we were always going to be pulling from the grid regardless um, because the battery wouldn't give us enough, whereas the battery can cope with the heat pump. So I've been doing some data logging on the old um, tumble dryer and the new one. We, the new one we've went for, uh, so it's the heat pump, we went for Samsung, I quite like Samsung. It's also got a five year warranty. It was about 600 quid. The model we have is a DV5000 heat pump tumble dryer efficiency A++. It's the 8 kilo model as well. The old tumble dryer we had was just a Beko, 3 kilowatt, nothing fancy, um, vented out the back. So we've been doing some data logging on it. So essentially we've rigged up a, a test plug, so the CT clamp of this data logger goes round, so we've got some really accurate information the statistics of the old one and the new one. So the old one, essentially all that comes back to here, so just to give you an idea of what that looks like. So there's the chart, so this is the old one. Um, as you can see, it's it's fairly constant, but actually it's up and down like a yo-yo. So as you probably know, the vented tumble dryers, they're on, they're off, they're on, they're off, they're not always heating. Um, and again, the cycle tends to be a bit longer. In fact, it's a good time to mention that. The, the other good function I really like about these heat pump ones, the better ones, they've got a function where they sense the moisture and the clothes, so they shut themselves off. So with the old one, you were basically stuck. If you stuck it on to 100 minutes, it's going to run for 100 minutes. So the last 20 minutes of that could have been wasting energy because the clothes may have been dry. The new one shuts itself down. So that's fairly constant, albeit it's up and down. Um, how does the heat pump one look? It pretty much gets up to to temperature quicker, but it stays there, it runs all the time, and then it pretty much shuts itself off. Not too sure what that dip was all about. So I did three data logs on the new tumble dryer, and I'm going to choose the middle one. Um, so there's literally two pence of a difference between them, so I'm going to choose the middle one, which incidentally ran for 100, uh, one hour and 40, so 100 minutes, which is exactly the same time as the other one ran, the old one. So. The old one, which was the Beko 3 kilowatt vented tumble dryer, used 2.54 kilowatt hours and it cost 37 pence. Now that's based at 15 pence a kilowatt hour, which is pretty much what we are paying. So as I said, that was 100 minutes. So again, going on the middle, the middle data log, which is very detailed, it ran at one kilowatt hour, so that's 15 pence, because it's 15 pence a kilowatt hour, and again, that ran for one hour 40. So the other one, I said that was the middle one, the other one ran for an hour and a half, 13 pence, the other one, two hours, 17 pence, so that was 0 0.89 kilowatt hours and 1.2 kilowatt hours. So what, what does that mean? I think if I've done my sums right, I think it means it's 59.5% more efficient. So as you can see, it's clearly under half the price. So 
Yeah, there's going to be a bit of a payback on it. It'll take a while, but it will have a payback. And again, that one of ours has got a five-year warranty, so I'm I'm quite comfortable with that investment. I know I'll get it back. Um, might not be for everyone, especially to shell out 600 quid in a tumble dryer, but I definitely see the need for it, and it was annoying me, draining my battery in the winter. Um, so would you go and change it? It's up to you. If yours went in the blink, you should be definitely going for the heat pump model. Um, I think it's the future, incidentally, heat pumps might be what we're heating our houses with in a few years when gas is getting done away with, who knows. So, back to our solar system here, what's been happening? Uh, this month, so this was month four that we've got hours in, we've just done more than a thousand kilowatt hours, so I'm quite chuffed with that. It's October, it's the last day in October. The weather's been pretty rotten in October. I was expecting it to be really poor, but it's actually going to give us 200 kilowatt hours this month, so I'm quite chuffed with that. Um, so that pretty much covers that. If there's anything else, incidentally, you want me to get a data log on around the house, just let us know, because it's easy to set up. Hope this has been useful. Thanks. Bye-bye.